Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about building software without liking it. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, I love to build software, but I'm not overly interested in the craft of programming. What should I do? Well, I'm a little bit confused by this, I'm going to admit, because I don't really understand how you can love building software without liking to program. Well, I, I can understand it. I'm going to try my best to answer this, but it's a, for me it seems a little bit counterintuitive because the act of programming is the way that you create software. Without it, there is no software. But my guess here is that perhaps you are not a software developer. Like that's not the sort of person that you actually want to be. Perhaps who what, who you want to be is one of the supporting roles to the software development process. So something that is worth knowing for people who are getting into the industry is that usually a software team, you might think that this is just a, well, let's be honest here, a bunch of guys who are sitting in a, uh, in a room and just kind of churning out code and there might be some manager somewhere who is like, hey guys, we need you to build this thing. Okay, cool. And then everybody just huddles together and go, right, let's do this thing. And then we we all kind of just sit down and like start tapping on our computers and then the matrix starts to unfold. But uh, the reality is that f that is true in some cases. Absolutely. Mostly that's true for the DevOps, the operations team. They, they basically have their own little bunker somewhere. Nobody really knows where they work. We just know that we call this number if something doesn't work. And then they get a little bit annoyed and asks us if we've restarted the system or not. But uh, for most developers, this is, not the, this is not all that is part of a software development team. There's a lot of other people involved as well. And you've probably heard me use the term stakeholder. Now, stakeholder is a little bit of a loose term that can mean anybody who basically has this investment in the software development process. But you also have supporting roles or contributing stakeholders to the team that are not necessarily programmers. So the usual, the normal, absolute most normal thing that you can possibly have uh, the minimum, or uh, well, let's just call it the minimum. The minimum thing, as I was saying, is that you have one, two, three, x, x amount of developers who actually do the coding. But in ma many companies, you have roles such as, say, a designer. That's very, very common. You have a designer or some UX person who is responsible for designing what the software, like the application, is going to look like, and they, like they, in many cases, are part of figuring out, okay, what is the next feature, and like the product. We call this product development, the product development department, and we're going to touch on that as well. So, product development is a part of what like the software engineers are doing, of course. But we like to make a separation between the two. We usually say that there are product development team members, and then you have engineers, or okay, the engineering department, or the engineer uh, engineering uh, the, uh, people, so forth. Engineers, 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 engineers. These are the software developers. The product development team is usually a it can be a range of different people. The minimum amount of people you usually have in that team is going to be, at the very least, a product owner. And from my perspective, that might be the thing that you are most suited to do, uh, to be one of those people, if you're not interested in the craft of programming. Because a product owner, as that person, your job is to set the roadmap for the software developers. Because we are, although we are handsome, sexy geniuses who make a lot of money, uh, we don't do everything in an IT company. We are, we are way too advanced to sit there and go to a lot of meetings and talk to customers and, and figure out what's the next feature going to be. Uh, we're just, in many cases, you can think of the, uh, the titans that we are as just an engine. That's what we are. We're an engine, a stupid, stupid engine where, I mean, we like to dabble in things and we like to have opinions and thoughts and so forth. And they're cute and f nice and so forth. But it's, li it's a little bit like 
it's uh, it's like uh, having a sibling who has kids like we just kind of we we are part-time parents we like try to like when the kids are dry and happy we come and play a little bit with them but as soon as they piss themselves we kind of go ah oh, we don't really want to deal with that that's more that's what we are about and the PO that is the person who is responsible for telling us okay today guys you're gonna work on these things or today guys uh, I need your help I need to dis we're gonna design this feature can we go into a meeting everybody and like let's pull in the designer because she or he have they have designed uh, this artboard here can we get your feedback on this thing like what, uh, what what do we need to think about and your role as the product owner is to 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 specify what features the engineers are supposed to work on and that is a very powerful role. It's a very big responsibility. And I've worked like a, a good PO is gold. It, it is the best thing ever for if you want to make a productive software team. Holy shit, that is an important role. If you want to have a really, really bad product, well, having a bad PO is like the worst. It's like the worst thing you can possibly have. They, yeah, I've been in so many situations where this has been a problem it's really hard to find a good PO but if you are interested in like the process of building software this and but you don't want to do the coding this is probably the I, th I will say I think that this is the best place for you to be I'm not gonna say that it's easy because as, as, as I was saying there's a lot of meetings there's a lot of handling stakeholders and communicating you're basically the hub you are the communication channel between the engineers the customers uh, the like the head honchos of the company, if you have a really big company structure, you usually have many department heads. You are the you are the gateway to the team in many cases. Not in all, in all cases, but your ultimate responsibility is to design and uh, define the scope and the specifications for new features and create a roadmap for all of the engineers. And uh, that is, I think, a very good. It would be a very good fit for you if you're more design inclined. You can do do that as well because that's also part of the product development process. Designers is a little bit. Uh, they're not. Like, I mean, they're not. Their focus is not the building of software per se. Usually, it's very common that you have one designer to multiple teams or stuff like that because the process of designing is usually more universal than you just do. You're just part of the software development cycle. Then you can of course also be part of QA work, you're doing testing and things like that. In, in, in some companies they have testers and quality assurance staff that are part of setting uh, quality requirements on the development. They are usually involved at the later stages. Uh, well, they ideally they should be involved as quickly as possible. But that's also something that you can do. That's not necessarily coding strictly. Uh, it, there can be elements of coding, but most of what you do is to quality test the system and make sure that it's uh, it's up to scratch and then there are other there's a range of other roles so like security concerns and so forth depending on how big the company is I'm just trying now to focus on like what would be true in every single company and in every single company practically there's going to be a software team there's going to be some type of stakeholder like a a PO or whatever and usually there will be some type of designer because these this is like the minimum amount you would need in order to produce modern day applications but there are as uh, you will find that in the product development space and in other areas uh, there's actually a lot of other occupations that are related to the building of software but it's not strictly the actual craft like you're not actually doing the coding so just getting that out of like real making that clear S uh, being part of a software team guys doesn't necessarily mean that you are an engineer there are many other roles that you could have within the, the that space so what I want you to take away from this is that if you love making software but you don't like coding then I really think that you should consider a PO role a product owner role which is a role where you have to be m m you are an in administrator in for many for many intensive purposes your job is to do market research, well not always, but your job is basically to define the roadmap for features and taking requirements from different customers and stakeholders and create, uh, basically tell all the developers what to do and talk to them and like get their feedback, ideally if you're a good one, you talk to them and say, hey we need to build this thing guys, how do you feel about it, is that going to work, uh, what do we have to think about and work together with people 
to deliver software. You're not doing the coding, but you're doing all the other stuff. And I promise you guys, there's so much to be done when it comes to preparing the work for the developers. In many cases, as I said, it's like trying to fuel an engine. You, if without any fuel, without all the preparation, the engine isn't going to do shit. It's just going to sit there. And that's exactly how the engineers work. You have to, there's so much more going on than just someone's just writing code before you can actually ship a feature. Have a great day.